Hello friends, this is WCOPEN38 and today I'm finally bringing you my video about non-lethal self-defense. Now I did a video quite a while back where I showed you different items you can use that aren't necessarily deadly force. And so I finally got everything here at the same time to finish up the video series as far as this segment on pepper spray. Now this one this is by police. It's OC17 and a Magnum carry. This one's four ounces. It's a pretty good size. It came with this nylon pouch. Easy to carry, easy to hang on to. Now what to deploy it, see this lever? You would flip that out and depress the trigger. So you can see the nozzle there. Close it up, lock it in place. No more nozzle. Now the four ounce size, according to their advertising, it's good for about 12 feet. And I can tell you from, from actual use, it does work at 12 feet. It works even closer, but it winds up overspraying and splashing back because it's under a lot of volume pressure. Give you a little look. There's not really a lot to look at on it. It's a typical cylinder full of pepper spray. Okay. This next one, this is a small size either for ladies or for a pocket. This one's from Sabre. Got a little pocket clip on it. This is ideal for either in a jacket or a lady to carry in her purse. Maybe in a glove box. Now it deploys the same way as the four outs. Flip this over. Now you can deploy it. You can see the nozzle. No, I'm not going to show you how well it works. I know that quite well and I want to finish my video without uh, coughing and spitting and hacking for the rest of the day. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go over a few more things about uses but I want to show you one more that I that I saw and I didn't order it and I didn't order it for a reason. This one's from Saber and this one is a home security one and it's 13 ounces. This is a uh, super size. Comes with a little bracket for mounting on the wall. It's much bigger. They use a pistol grip. It's got a pull out little key to make sure that you don't accidentally deploy it. This is your trigger, and it's quite effective. But the downside of it is that it's a fogger. Well, what does that mean? It means instead of being a stream, like some of these are, it's going to deploy in a fog, in a really wide area. Now, if you're covering a wide area, you've got to have to think about something. A, you got to make sure you hit what you're aiming at, which in a fog you're going to do that even by accident. You're going to get, hit uh, whoever you're aiming this at. But you're going to hit everything else in the meantime. In other words, if you're in your home and you use it, it's going to be all over the walls, all over the floor. It's going to be half around the ceiling, the chairs, and all your furniture. So this one's good. It's good for home use, but you have to be aware that once you do it, man, you're going to be doing a lot of cleanup. Of course, if you're protecting yourself, you're not worried about any real cleanup. But I just wanted to give it, you an example of something that's really large for home use. Now, I'm not saying not to get it. just want you to know uh, what's involved once you do actually deploy this. And to give you an example on the screen, one of those is about the size of a paint can. It holds 13 ounces. Now, of course, this paint can has a lot more in it. It's a trim adhesive, but they're relatively about the same size. I know because I've used one this size. Not the spray adhesive, but the actual one made like this. Now, the one I used, it didn't fog. It actually shot a stream, and it would shoot a stream of about 30 feet and it was quite effective and if you held the nozzle down it would last about 15 seconds 
which is a really long time. It's a lot of spray. Now, if you have to use this one, say, in an emergency, you have to think about what are the repercussions? How am I using it? Is it appropriate to use? You have to decide that yourself. Now I can tell you from practical experience, this will do the job. How good a job does it do? Well, if the person's sober, if they're just agitated, or they're just having a bad day and they've decided to take it out on you, this is going to work pretty effectively. Hopefully, when they see this, they might change their mind. Now, do you owe it to someone to give them a warning? Personally, I would. It's the best thing for you to do, especially in the state I'm in. I'm in California, so they always try to blame the victims here. So make a statement. Hey, leave me alone, back up, or I'm going to spray you. Now, the rest of it after that point is kind of up to them. If they challenge you, if they feel threatened, then go ahead and you do what you got to do to defend yourself. Now, when is it not appropriate to do it? I can't tell you a hundred percent, but I can tell you from experience, you can't use it if someone's having a bad day or they ask you for change. Hey, do you have a dollar I could have? Uh, you can't bring out the maze. Psh, go away, fool. That's not appropriate. If you feel in jeopardy, if you feel that you're being threatened, hopefully just pulling this out and telling them to go away or something bad is going to happen to them in language that I'm not going to use in my video should be enough to deter them. You let them make the decision to what's called escalate the situation. Now, one thing to remember, don't let them get too close. Even though you have this, not everybody is affected by pepper spray. What? They're not affected? Nope, nope. Uh, I'll tell you what people are not affected by pepper spray. People on PCP don't even know they've been hit with this. It might make them snivel, but I know from experience it doesn't bother them. If someone's been drinking and you hit them with this, the most thing you're going to do is you're going to annoy them. Why is that? Because the alcohol closes up the blood vessels and it doesn't affect the mucus system the way it normally does. They might inhale it and start coughing, but that's a, that's a gimme. I've seen it do absolutely nothing to people that are under the influence of alcohol or PCP. Meth, I don't know. Meth doesn't really affect them that much. I've seen people get hit with this with, that are on methamphetamines and it, it tends to slow them down. Now, if you happen to use the small one, of course one thing you have to remember, this is one quarter of the amount of uh, OC that this one has. So, if you're actually using one this size, and you do have to deploy it, make sure you have an escape route. Just in case uh, it doesn't do enough to slow them down. Now, hopefully, uh, you're, not in, you're not backed up in a position where you have nowhere to go. But each uh, situation determines itself. And what I mean by that is that the people that are looking to cause a problem with you, A, it's either a coincidence that you happen to be there and they're just having a bad day, or they've, just, they've been searching you out and they're going to make you a victim. And then that what you're what that would be termed a target of opportunity. And that's when you're going to have to go for what you know. You're going to have to protect yourself as much as possible. Now, same thing as with when I was talking about the other ones, you can't spray someone with this. 
just for asking you for loose change or or do you have any food or something like that you kind of need to be feeling threatened which is a key word you have to feel threatened but you can't just say well he threatened me by asking me for a buck that won't work especially in California that that's not gonna fly the police won't uh, back you up on that and you're probably gonna wind up looking at more charges than than the guy that was bothering you you can't use it just for being bothered if you feel that you're being threatened or your life's in danger then you go for it if if they've broken into your home and if you have the super soaker just remember once you use this one you're going to be clean doing a lot of cleaning but like I said before you're not going to be too worried about it now the pouch it works real nice I'm going to use it I'm going to keep one in my car I'm going to take one with me when I go walking my dog and I'll feel a little bit more secure because nowadays you can't really protect yourself enough but you, not every situation is appropriate for a handgun use or even for a deadly weapon like a knife you can't escalate things yourself I can't express to you enough just how important it is to make sure that you're on the right end of the bench of the law when the police come up you're gonna to have to have been at least threatened and tried to escape or they cut off your means to escape and you've had to use this now there might be a situation that comes up in a flash and you've got to deploy it quick well that's going to be for you to decide and you and the police will work work on it and work it out just make sure you're on the right end of things now this is the one video that was real important to me to get out but there's a lot of other circumstances and I'm going to go over it in a few more videos about different reasons to be using non-lethal weapons in this day and age this is my video for non-lethal force I hope you enjoy it please send me any replies or any comments or if there's anything that I happen to miss please let me know because there's a lot involved in using non-lethal force this is Dopey Copeland 38 saying I'll be back with more for you